Welcome to the Jigsaw Session, Understanding Autism. This presentation will include a short overview of Autism Spectrum Disorder, a look at some support strategies and give you information regarding other services within the community you may wish to visit. There are many different support strategies, most of which can be adapted to each unique child. These are best explored by attending our local parent support sessions delivered online. This will provide further opportunity to discuss concerns with our practitioners and other parents who are a great source of support and information. Further details are given at the end of this presentation. Autism is a neurodevelopmental disorder. This means the way the brain is wired is different. Everyone's brain works and learns things differently. That's why we are all interested in different things, have different skills and feel different emotions. However, difference within autism often results in confusion regarding the way we perceive or read situations, environments, feelings, emotions, interactions and communication. Following ongoing research, the exact cause of autism remains unclear. Autism is not an illness or disease and cannot be cured. However, there are strategies that can be used to help support your child see, hear and feel the world around them. The autism spectrum is not a linear scale, although this is often the way people visualise autism. A question parents frequently ask is, where is my child on the spectrum? This is an almost impossible question to answer. Whilst there are a number of recognised areas of developmental difficulty, there are, there are no two people with autism the same, as is the case for people without autism. Areas of developmental difficulty, by their very nature, will evolve and develop at varying rates, both together and independent of each other. Additionally, there are often areas of development that may recognise suggested levels and stages. Preschool children are often described as having developmental surges and periods where their development appears to plateau as they learn and practise new skills, all of which make suggesting potential stages of autism impossible. We prefer to visualise the spectrum in the form of a wheel and consider a person may be affected by their autism to a greater or lesser degree in the given areas. It is worth remembering that whilst you may gain this understanding on any particular day, it will evolve as the child develops at his or her own pace. Let's, let's look at the spectrum. The spectrum, as demonstrated above, consists of many different traits or ways in which the brain processes information. As I mentioned earlier, if there are areas presenting with no particular concern, this area will function no differently to a neurotypical brain that may be affected by circumstance. For example, a person with autism could be described as having good language skills. However, these may be greatly compromised by loud noises and or crowded spaces, making conversations difficult. This is often described as sensory, sensory overload. We will look at this in more detail later. Executive function is an area concerned with cognitive flexibility and flexible thinking, for example the ability to change your thinking or views in relation to what is said to you, being able to understand and accept different points of view, paying attention and staying focused, organising and planning skills, for example planning how to complete activities, not just everyday routines, prioritising, regulating emotions and the ability to self-monitor, 
These are all elements of executive function. To understand autism further, let's explore additional areas of difference. Historically, the triad of impairment, social interaction, social communication and social imagination has been used to describe the main areas of difficulty for people with autism. However, the triad does not fully explore sensory difficulties, which are a fundamental area when attempting to understand autism. We feel this model, the four areas of difference, gives a clearer illustration of autism. The areas can intermingle or cross over into each other. As talked about previously, a person with autism may have difficulties to a greater or lesser degree in all these areas. Social communication, interaction and processing include facial expressions, emotions and feelings, tone of voice, repeating things, personal space, jokes and sarcasm, literal meaning and interpretation, and may find it hard to form friendships. Exploring this further, children with autism often appear to avoid eye contact, not looking towards you for example. Similarly, they may appear aloof or in, uninterested in people and have still facial expressions, making it difficult for parents and carers to pick up on their feelings and emotions. Children with autism struggle to notice and regulate their own emotions and feelings. Additionally, they have difficulty recognising those of others. They may laugh inappropriately when someone falls over, for example. They may often appear insensitive to the needs of others. For example, they will still expect their routine to remain the same, even if you are unwell or have received bad news, showing a lack of empathy. Children and people with autism find it hard to imagine the world from someone else's perspective and that other people have different thoughts and feelings from their own. Their tone of voice can appear monotone, almost robotic, showing little intonation, the subtle rhythm of our language. Similarly, they may misinterpret or not pick up on the meanings conveyed by the tone of voice of others. They may often repeat words and sentences used around them, sometimes immediately or a short while after. This is called immediate and delayed echolalia. Similarly, during play for example, they may continually repeat long sections of dialogue from a favourite film TV programme or book. This can often be out of context to what is going on around them and used in all scenarios, being reluctant to deviate, extend or adapt it. They may appear to invade the environmental space of others or be rough in their interactions. They may walk on toys and equipment, attempt to retrieve toys others are playing with, or endeavour to sit on a chair already occupied seemingly unaware of others and their activities. They may prefer to be on their own and often need cool down time, especially on arrival at home after school. Whilst they may understand slapstick humour, they may struggle to misinterpret jokes and sarcasm. Children and people with autism often interpret the language we use in everyday conversations literally, and this can cause anxiety. For example, phrases such as, I'm going to tear my hair out, pull your socks up, it's raining cats and dogs and dogs outside, and so on, can cause great confusion and distress. 
During peer group play sessions, children with autism will often focus on a toy or object a peer is playing with rather than the peer. The object then becomes the desire and focus of all their interest and not the opportunity for shared play or peer group interaction, thus making forming friendships difficult. Rigidity and flexibility of thought can cause problems with concept of danger, play, difficulties with change, difficulty in coping in new situations, and rigid, repetitive particular interests and behaviours. A lack of understanding of the concept of danger is often a feature, for example, running off possibly onto a busy road, throwing themselves off furniture, climbing to great heights, talking to strangers and giving them personal information. Children with autism often place toys in a particular order or in lines and will, although not always, replace them exactly if they are moved. Play scenarios can often be copied and pursued rigidly and repetitively, lacking imagination and variation. Extending or adapting play scenarios can be problematic, either independently or were encouraged to do so by others. Moreover, they struggle to share and take turns. Parents often describe their child's needs to follow their own agenda regarding play or daily routines, no matter what is going on around them. Routines and the need or insistence of sameness are also a consideration. Children may struggle to adapt when a change in the normal routine happens, for example, a later bath time or a different route to school possibly due to roadworks. Insistence of the predictability of sameness can often be evident, possibly regarding the need to use a certain cup either due to design or colour. Difficulties with transitions can also be a feature, for example, when a particular activity ends, moving on to another activity or moving to another room. New and unfamiliar situations and environments can be overwhelming, causing heightened anxiety as they can be unpredictable and create unfamiliar consequences and actions. Preparation and the use of social stories or visual timetables can be helpful. Children can have a particular interest that is all-encompassing and pursued to the exclusion of others. This interest can often impede the participation in everyday activities. The interest can suddenly move to another toy, item or theme. It may also be that the focus or interest appears to serve no immediate function or purpose. When we talk about our senses, we usually think about the five most common – taste, sight, smell, hearing and touch. However, there are two lesser known senses that often affect children with autism – vestibular and proprioception. Vestibular concerns the senses in our inner ear, which together with our vision tells us the position of our head, gives us a sense of movement and enable us to be upright. Proprioception concerns the sensation from our joints and muscles which provide information about where we are. It also helps us grade the force that we apply to objects. Concerns in these areas can often create a difficulty to sit still, bounce, rock 
or to place one's head in non-conventional positions. So how can we further recognise sensory differences? Here are some sensory behavioural presentations children with autism may have. You may be able to relate to some. We know that no two children are the same, regardless whether they have a learning or neurological disability or not. Therefore, no two difficulties will present the same. Sensory sensitivities are often described as hypo, displaying a reduced or underdeveloped sensitivity, or hyper, displaying a heightened or overdeveloped sensitivity. For example, some may find background sounds unbearably loud, distracting and even painful, where others can appear indifferent to them, passive and unaffected. Even within these definitions, there is a wide variation. These sensory differences and the regulation challenges can cause an immense amount of confusion, anxiety and overload for a child with autism. Not being able to understand your internal feelings and sensations can make it difficult to regulate emotions, express how you feel, express to others what you need and feel secure in the world around you. Given what we understand of possible sensory differences, autism is often, though not always, accompanied by a state of overload and confusion. If your norm is an anxious state, then anything or anyone new can cause the anxiety to rise to unimaginable proportions. This may lead to situations commonly referred to as a meltdown or shutdown. Here we have listed some typical behavioural responses. These are thought to be the unconscious defence mechanism to protect the child with autism who is scared, confused and overloaded. These are not temper tantrums. Temper tantrums are generally an act of defiance, manipulation and usually have an end goal. Children will often argue back, protest or try to negotiate. These are not typical responses from a child with autism who is displaying any of the above. Sting refers to self-stimulating behaviour. This can take the form of repetitive rocking, spinning, flapping, chewing, fidgeting or repetitive sounds for example. It can be a coping strategy to soothe, de-stress, calm, re relax reduce anxiety 
or a means to process information. Further exploration regarding sensory processing, associated difficulties, wider support and intervention strategies can be found on our sensory presentation online. Details will be given at the end of this presentation. It is useful to know this about autism because it can explain why a child presents with so much anxiety, why anxiety presents in so many different ways, why communication can be difficult, the need to create a secure base, and if supported appropriately, interactions can be more productive. So what adjustments can we make? Thinking about the sensory environment, consider the lighting. Try to avoid fluorescent lights as these often flicker or hum. Consider the colours our walls are painted or the pattern of wallpaper, avoiding metallic where possible. How many pictures or photographs do we have on the walls? Do we have any reflective surfaces? We may not be able to hear the rumble of outside traffic or central heating radiators. But if you have heightened sensitivity to sound, this may cause a concern. Consider strong cooking smells, perfumes or, or scented candles. Make photograph or picture books to look through before going to a new environment or meeting new people in order to reduce anxiety. If your child appears not to notice your attempts to join in their play, copy or imitate their play movements, for example moving a car backwards or forwards. Do this sitting next to them within their eye line. It may take some time, but it can be the start of parallel play. Play simple turn-taking games, for example blowing and popping bubbles, to and fro activities with a ball or car. Use pop-up cause and effect toys for my turn, your turn. Have toys or activities available to them that you know help calm, whatever their particular favourite is. Often this may involve spinning or rotating toys, placing things in lines or perhaps moving into an enclosed space. I'm sure you can things you do in order to feel calm. For example, you may bite your lip, tap your feet continually or look elsewhere. Avoid using long sentences. Reduce your language and talk slowly. Pause and give time for your child to think and respond. Use pointing and gest gestures. Visual timetables or now and next boards can be useful. Talk to your speech therapist for guidance about appropriate communication aids. Offer choices. Two to start with and always name them. If and when they make a choice, name it as you give it to them. Use distraction techniques. You know your child best and are your child's best teacher. Look for the behaviour triggers and intervene beforehand, distracting with a favoured toy or activity. Within a busy family life, this is not always easy. Enlist the help of wider family mem members if you can. Rewards and motivators for all children can be successful. Remember to make them instant and relevant, and once it has been given, please do not take it away. These are just a few support strategies that could be useful. In order to explore these further, we recommend you attend our Emotional Regulation Support Session. Details will be given at the end of this presentation.
This presentation has focused on the understanding of possible developmental and behavioural differences a child with autism may have. Equally important is to acknowledge many of the areas of difference we have discussed are also skills and positive attributes that can provide the scaffolding to build, extend and enhance learning and development. Here we have listed just a few considered typical ASD traits and their associated possible positive learning qualities. All children are unique and a skilled educator, whether parent or professional, will use individual interests and personality characteristics to enhance learning. Children and people with autism will and do learn, enjoy and achieve. As with every unique child, it is the ability to recognise their individual learning support requirements in order to facilitate and then accomplish this. The following slides contain information and contact details regarding intervention support sessions delivered by the Coventry and Warwickshire Neurodevelopmental Service. We also provide a telephone appointment service where you can discuss any concerns regarding autism with an experienced neurodevelopmental practitioner who will offer you advice and support strategies. To discuss any intervention support, please call the intervention teams on 024 76 961 226 for Coventry and 0300 303 4180 for Warwickshire. Don't forget the support provided by family, friends and the professionals already involved with your child. They have a wealth of experience and are a fantastic resource. Understanding the uniqueness of all children takes time with the inevitable ups and downs. Remember to give yourself this time. Be consistent, repeat, repeat and repeat strategies and applaud each accomplished step however small you think it is. We feel it is important to highlight, at different times in your journey with your child, you may have different concerns and therefore need to access different support services. The following slides detail various services throughout the county. Please note the Neurodevelopmental Preschool Autism Service cannot verify the accuracy of their information and does not necessarily endorse the products, theories and advice from these providers. We strongly advise that you consult your appropriate involved specialists or professionals when considering any intervention or support strategies.
Rise offers services to support the emotional well-being and mental health of children and young people in Coventry and Warwickshire. Dimensions Tool is an online service. You will be asked to answer a series of questions after which you will be provided with relevant advice, support and local interventions. National Autistic Society has a wealth of reliable information, advice and support strategies available on their website. Autism West Midlands is a regional charity which offers support and advice along with organising activities and events for individuals with autism and their parents and carers. Act for Autism runs workshops and seminars for professionals and parents and carers. Sendias, Special Educational Needs and Disabilities Information Advice and Support Service, offer advice and support on educational matters. The Family Information Service offer free information on a broad range of services available to families. The local offer has information to support children and young people with special educational needs and disabilities. Do to Learn is a website with resources and activities for building social skills and behaviour regulation. Thank you for listening to our online presentation. Please remember, if you would like information about our parent support sessions, or if you have any questions or concerns regarding intervention support, please contact the intervention teams on 0300 303 4180 for Warwickshire and 02476 961 226 for Coventry. Thank you.